Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Crack J in English, the channel of an academy. And uh, I am Jitendra Dixit. Here is my profile. I did my B.Tech from IIT Kanpur, and I have been mentoring IIT J aspirants for last 11 years. So I teach mathematics, and uh, we are going to do transformation of graphs. We'll continue that. You know, I have, I've, uh, I have already taken four sessions on that. So today we'll do transformations because of greatest linear functions when we put greatest linear on x or greatest linear on y or greatest linear on fx all right then how the graph of y is equal to fx transforms all right so we'll do we'll learn all these things today but before we begin let's uh, let me tell you about the, the unacademy subscription so as you know unacademy is india's largest online learning platform and once you get plus subscription on unacademy you get access to daily live classes of all the educators who are teaching uh, on an academy so as you know India's top educators are teaching there so you get access to their live classes as well as you can watch their recorded sessions also uh, you can follow any educator of your choice that is uh, there's no restriction so you have unlimited access you can also ask your doubts during the live sessions uh, there will be dedicated doubt sessions as well all right so uh, you can attend the special classes which are free special classes you don't need to take any subscription for subscription for a special classes and special classes are taken by many educators every day so you can see a lot of special classes are going on every day you can attend unlimited special classes for free and you will get to know the feel of the platform you will know how to interact with your educator uh, how interactive this platform is all right so just go and attend the special classes if you haven't taken the subscription and the courses which I was talking about on plus are well structured that means you can see the schedule of all the upcoming sessions in advance with, with date time and topic name all right so you can plan your sessions accordingly these are the subscription charges for 12 months you'll have to pay 38,500 and for 24 months it is 56,000 but you get 10% discount in this so use my code jeet1 and they'll get 10% uh, discount I'll have to pay 34,650 for 12 months and 50,400 for two years, 24 months, all right? You can also subscribe for one, three, and six months, but uh, average per month will be higher in these three packages, okay? So it is always preferable to go for 12 and 24 months. Now let me tell you about the iconic subscription. So this is another kind of subscription, second. So two types of subscriptions you can take. One is plus, another is iconic. I, in iconic subscriptions you get all the benefits of plus so whatever you're getting in plus you'll get the same thing in uh, iconic also and apart from that you'll get a personal coach that means an expert who will guide you throughout your exam preparation for top exams like IDJ advanced J main or uh, bits all right your test analysis will be done in a personalized manner personalized manner means uh, a feedback will be given to you personalized feedback will be given to you to, to manage your time or exam approach all right similarly a study planner uh, a study planner will be uh, customized and bi-weekly reviews will be given to highlight your, uh, your progress all right so this is iconic subscription in which you get personal attention by an expert and uh, its charges are 56,000 56,000 for two year one year and after 10% discount, it will be 50,400 and 86,000 for two years, all right? And that will become 77,400 after 10% discount, all right? Now you can download an Academy's learning app from Play Store, all right? After that, downloading this, you're gonna, you're gonna start a special, attending a special classes, all right? Now, we have already done a lot of transformation i'll continue after that so we did seven all right okay so now today's transformation will start uh, we know the graph of y is equal to fx and we put greatest integer function greatest integer fx we are going to put greatest integer function on fx all right 
then we'll see how this graph is transformed. So you can see fx is replaced by greatest integer of fx. So three type three type of transformation can you can do in this equation. Y is equal to fx. What are these three transformations due to greatest integer function? Like in modulus we did. <coughs> you can uh, write this equation greatest integer of fx, which we are going to do now. In the second, you can do y is equal to f of greatest integer of x. You can put greatest integer greatest integer on input. Okay. So first your input will go into greatest integer and that will become the input of f and then you'll get the output all right so you will get output final output corresponding to integers only right and last is greatest integer of y you're putting y greatest integer on y okay like this so these are the three things which we need to learn today all right so now let's see first transformation and after this it is going to be y is equal to greatest integer of fx <coughs> Uh, let me tell you about the greatest integer of x quickly so you know greatest integer of x is 0 when x belongs to 0 to 1 right greatest integer of any number is 1 when number belongs to 1 to 2 including 1 excluding 2 right and minus 1 when x belongs to minus 1 to 0 all right so similarly you can keep writing it if it is between 2 to 3 then it will greatest integer will become 2 and so on so basically now you, in this you can see does this this output this output final output that means values of y are going to be integers only right because uh, initially your output was fx now you have put greatest near greatest integer on that output that means your final output is going to be now greatest integer function all right so here i'll take a base graph y is equal to fx random the uh, like uh, say it is this was the uh, base graph we were taking right so i'll take the same graph but in this case i'm going to tell you the integers in which this this graph lies okay so this is minus two so this is minus one this is zero so this is one so this is 2, two and then 3, and then say this is 4, okay? That's it. So this complete graph lies between minus 2 to 4, minus 2 to 4 this value is less than 4 y2 this value is somewhere between 3 and 4 and this value is least value is somewhere between minus 2 and minus 1 okay see now what are we going to do uh, to plot the graph of y is equal to greatest integer of fx first you need to draw the horizontal lines okay just to mark the points so not proper lines just to see where this function achieves integral values so this is the point where this function is going to achieve 3 okay so we will mark this point on x axis so this point is say x3 all right so at x is equal to x3 we'll have to solve this okay when fx will be given we'll solve fx is equal to 3 to find x3 all right then we will see uh, the value where this function is equal to 2 so say this is the point where this function is equal to 2 this point is say x2 and this is the point where this function is equal to 1 okay 
and uh, zero you know zero uh, at these points so this is always already mentioned and then you can see where's plot this horizontal line minus one okay so you can see there are two points where this function is minus one so let's take these two points as um, say x4 and x5 all right no problem x4 will be negative and x5 will also be negative and this is xx suppose xx okay and now let's take the greatest and here of this so i'm drawing the greatest graph of greatest linear function on the same axis okay here only and with white color all right so see this portion which lies between 0 to 1 its greatest integer will become 1 okay greatest integer of 0 will remain 0 and at x1 it is achieving 1 so x1 will be open because at x1 it greatest integer of fx will be 1 only okay here so like this like in greatest integer if you know uh, this right side point is open because at that integer it becomes it reaches to next integer right so at x1 it is reaching to next integer it always will happen in increasing graph okay in decreasing it won't happen okay so now you can see this uh, x1 to x2 x1 between x1 between x1 to x2 you can see this graph this green graph graph of fx lies between uh, 1 to 2 so it's greatest in here greatest in here of this portion okay i'm talking about this portion so greatest in here of this portion is going to be now one all right because all the values of fx are lying between one to two so this will become one and x2 at x is equal to x2 again you need to put open because so x2 it is now two all right now between x2 to x3 between x2 to x3 all right between x2 to x3 greatest integer of this function is going to be 2 because fx lies between 2 to 3 okay like this now similarly between x3 to this last point say this last point is say this last point is x uh, 4 5 6 7 say x7 all right so between x3 to x7 okay at x3 it is 3 but at x7 it is not 4 it is less than 4 it is between 3 and 4 okay so this whole graph will be equal to 3 and end point will not be excluded in this case because it's not it is not achieved 4 at x7 it is not 4 it is less than 4 only right less than 4 you can see this value is here so its greatest India will remain 4 only I think you have got it now see negative this portion negative let's take the greatest integer of negative portion so in this case you can see this graph is decreasing it's starting from x6 to x7 all right this portion so between x6 to x7 it is uh, between minus 1 and 0 so at x6 is at 0 so the greatest integer of 0 will remain 0 all right and here it will be excluded all right then after that it will become minus 1 because greatest function values of function lie between minus 1 and 0 and greatest integer of minus 1 will remain minus 1 so now you can see in decreasing graph open interval is on left hand side in increasing open interval is on right hand side okay so that is what happens now between x5 to x4 so at x5 and x4 values are minus 1 so these values greatest integer values will remain here only and between this it will become between this it is between minus 1 and minus 2 fx is between minus 1 and minus 2 so its greatest integer will be minus 2 all right greatest integer will be minus to this i hope it is clear now let's come to between x4 and x uh, this point i have not mentioned let's take let's name this point say x8 all right between x4 and x8 again graph is between minus 1 and 0 so it will be minus 1 only it's very small graph and this portion will come at x8 it will be 0 only right so this is the complete graph so in this way you make so first you need to plot the graph of y is equal to fx then draw horizontal lines and after that you can plot so if graph is completely increasing or decreasing then it is very easy to put greatest integer function so i'll give you some example and that will make things more clear all right so now first example is y is equal to 
greatest indicator of signing so i'm taking this graph because this is very important and many a times we use this graph okay integral calculus and differential calculus so first i'll plot the graph of y is equal to fx y is equal to sin x and you can plot the graph between 0 to 2 pi only because after that function f sin x will repeat its sin x will start repeating its values so obviously greatest linear of sin x will also start repeating its values right so whatever the graph of uh, this function is between 0 to 2 pi the same graph you need to repeat after 2 pi to 4 pi and then 4 pi to 6 pi the same graph you need to repeat all right so i'm just taking this portion okay this portion of sin x between pi to 2 pi okay that is your prime focus to plot this graph all right so now this is say 1 and this is minus 1 all right And zero. So actually, the whole graph lies between zero, one, and minus one. Okay. So now there's no other line you need to plot. You have got horizontal lines. This is minus one. This peak is minus one. Okay. So now let's start. This point is pi, pi by two. So between zero to pi by two, or in fact zero to pi, and this point is two pi. So between zero to uh, this zero between zero to pi by two, or pi by two to pi, excluding excluding pi by two. The graph of sin x or values of sin x are between 0 and 1 okay they are not achieving they will it will achieve 1 at pi by 2 so we are leaving that point okay because at pi by 2 greatest integer of sin x will be 1 only okay because greatest integer of 1 is 1 so this white you can see this white okay this white colored graph is a graph of greatest integer of sin x now between 0 to pi because values of sin x are less than 1 and greater than 0 or equal to so its greatest integer greatest unit of these values will be zero only okay zero only and this will be zero. all right now uh, at pi at pi also at uh, sin x is zero so its greatest unit will be zero then after that uh, after that um, this uh, pi between pi to 2 pi at 2 pi also it is 0 so greatest linear of two, uh, sin x at x is equal to 2 pi will be 0 only right it is greatest linear of x is 0 now between pi and 2 pi between pi and 2 pi okay okay x strictly between excluding pi and 2 pi so between pi and 2 pi sin x lies between minus 1 and 0 it achieves it, it achieves minus 1 at 1 point 3 pi by 2 uh, but it is not equal to 0 because it is what 0 at pi and 2 pi and we have excluded these two points so all these values are between minus 1 and 0 all these values are between minus 1 and 0 including minus 1 and excluding 0 so greatest integer of these values sin x okay sin x belongs to this in this interval so greatest integer of these values will be minus 1 all right so you now you need to plot this minus 1 graph it will touch this sin x this the greatest linear of sin x will touch sin x at x at x is equal to 3 pi by 2 all right at this point and then keep drawing this line horizontal line up to 2 pi and at 2 pi it will be 0 again okay so that is the graph so if i draw it separately if i draw it separately and i'll show you how does it look like say this point is pi this point is say 2 pi this point is say 3 pi this point is say 4 pi okay i'm drawing it up to 4 pi i'll extend it further and also left hand side i'll extend it to left hand side also minus pi minus 2 pi so between 0 to pi it was uh, 0 and oh sorry one point was open I just missed pi by 2 
Hmm. So at um, pi by 2 it will be open at pi by 2 it will be open okay this one otherwise it will be zero okay and between pi to 2 pi it is going to be minus 1 like this and the same graph will repeat between 2 pi to 3 pi it is again going to be 0 excluding this point at this point it is going to be 1 this dot will keep coming uh, after 2 pi and then this graph like this and 4 pi it will be 0 again and then 4 pi to the same graph here it will be minus 1 to 0 this portion 0 here 0 here and here it will be like this okay so let's keep doing it it's a periodic function so greatest integer of sin x greatest integer of sin x will also be periodic function okay so that is the graph that is the graph of greatest integer of sin x and it's a periodic function its period is 2 pi same as the period of so by putting greatest integer of x on periodic functions they will remain periodic function okay because you know if fx is periodic then g of fx is also periodic right if fx is periodic then g of fx is also periodic okay as simple as that now i'll give you another example so example two we'll, we'll do it peacefully okay we'll do it slowly so that you you need to uh, you will understand it properly and these are important graphs so um, i'll do it slowly the second one is y is equal to greatest integer of x square okay you need to plot this graph between x uh, belonging to uh, say minus 2 to 3 minus 2 to uh, say mm, plus 2 right that's it symmetric you know this is an even function so graph will be symmetric about origin uh, symmetric about y-axis all right graph will be symmetric about y-axis let's do it So I'll draw this graph of y is equal to x square, okay, with this broken graph. They are just taking for the reference point of view. This is the graph of y is equal to x square, right? Uh, say this point is one and say this point is 2 and uh, right let me enlarge this now this will give you proper feel of the graph so this is 1 and this point is say 2 this is minus 1 and this is a minus 2 all right let me draw this graph properly seems slightly uneven all right okay so now uh, as i told you you need to draw horizontal lines okay so we'll draw horizontal lines the same color this is uh, say one this is uh, because x is equal to two it is going to be four right it is going to be four so you need to plot four horizontal lines okay so y-axis i'll keep it 
one, two, three, and four. So this is say one, this is say two, this is say three, and this is say four. All right. So yeah. And two it is going to be four, all right? Two and one, two and minus two. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Let me adjust these points again. And this also. The left hand side seems fine. So this is going to be a two. And. Uh, I'll adjust one also. Okay, so let's plot these horizontal lines first of all. Then three, then two, and then one. Okay, so this is going to be one line. Here it will be one, but at x is equal to one, x square is one. Okay, and minus one also, and then uh, you can plot and y is equal to 2 line and y is equal to 3 line okay once you have practice you can do it fast right you will do it very fast I, I'm just ex, I'm try I'm just trying to explain it so I'm doing it very slowly see I need to find this point first of all okay now I need to find these points because I know at x is equal to 1 at x is equal to 1 it is 1 right but for which value y is equal to x square will be 2 so x square is equal to 2 equate them this line is y is equal to 2 line right this line is y is equal to 3 line this line is y is equal to 4 line so equate 2 is 2 so you get x is equal to plus minus of root 2 so that means this value is plus root 2 and the other value is minus root 2 right minus root 2 this value is Similarly, if you equate x square with 3, this value is going to be plus root 3 and the other value is going to be left hand side, symmetrically, minus root 3, alright. We'll, uh, shift this minus 2 to left hand side slightly. Hmm. So, this is going to be minus root 3 and then this minus 2, alright. Now, we are ready. Now, we are ready. So, let's plot greatest India so you can see between minus 1 and 1 this graph this graph this graph between minus 1 and 1 all these values are x square between 0 and 1 right including 0 and excluding 1 because they will achieve values 1 and minus 1 x square will achieve values 1 at x is equal to 1 and minus 1 only so you need to plot this okay this then between 1 to root 2 between 1 to root 2 at x is equal to 1 it is going to be 1 only now 1 to root 2 it is between 1 to 2 x square is between 1 to 2 when x lies between 1 to root 2 when x lies i write it here 1 to root 2 x square lies between 1 to 2 all right and similarly minus root 2 to minus 1 also left hand side will do the same thing so you need to plot this line greatest trend here will become 2 and similarly here also greatest trend here will become 2 all right this will be open now then greatest trend here will become 2 this was greatest trend here is equal to 1 now greatest trend here will become 2 when x lies between root 2 to root 3 so greatest trend here will be 2 because x square will be between 2 to 3 and here, here also same thing left hand side it will be open symmetrically it's an even function so mirror image about y axis then between root 3 to root between root 3 to 2 excluding 2 and including root 3 that means when x belongs to root 3 to 2 this is excluding and this is uh, included all right and also left hand side minus 2 to minus root 3 this greatest integer will become 3 3 and this greatest integer will also become 3 all right and then at x is equal to 2 because 2 is included so at, at x is equal to 2 x square will be 4 so greatest India will also be 4 so graph will end at these dots all right and slightly okay extra so let's fix it like this all right
that is looking beautiful right <laughs> that is the graph of y is equal to greatest negative of x square so i think i uh, it is clear now i'll give you one more last example and then we'll move to another graph okay so last example and then we'll plot another curve so let's plot y is equal to greatest integer of when x belongs to minus 1 to 3 that's it try this try this example okay then I'll discuss it All right, so I'll start plotting the graph of first y is equal to x square minus 2x. All right, so this is x into x minus 2. Then we need to see the integers also. all right so this is x square minus 2x so it is like this 0 and then it will come again and cut the x-axis at x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2 yeah let me just It, uh, its vertex is at 1 okay 
minus b by 2a so its vertex is at 1 and 1 at x is equal to 1 we can see the value like this and this is 2 and we need to go up to 3 3 3 3 3 3 so it should and here minus 1 so at x is equal to minus 1 let's check the value if you put minus 1 in this it is minus 1 into minus 1 minus 2 so it is going to be plus 3 so at x is equal to minus 1 it is going to be plus 3 this value is basically plus 3 this is 3 uh, this 0 is 0 so obviously it will be somewhere between uh, uh, 0 to 3 it will be 1 and 2 also so we need to check those points and at x is equal to 3 also let's check so it is going to be 9 minus 2 into 3 so 6 yeah same value 3 symmetric right so at x is equal to 3 it will have the same value okay this so all right now what are these points where this function is equal to 2 and 1 okay and what is this point vertex first let's figure it out so at x is equal to 1 this is at x is equal to 1 so you put 1 so 1 into 1 minus 2 so it is minus 1 so exactly minus 1 okay so that means we don't need to go below this <clears throat> so this works perfectly minus 1 to 0 okay so this graph which is uh, on the which is below x axis is actually lying between minus 1 and 0 so that's perfect greatest integer of this part will be minus 1 only right greatest integer of this part i'm talking about this part i'm talking about will be minus 1 only minus 1 all right so now we need to figure out these points okay how to find these points see this graph is graph of x square minus 2x so and this line is y is equal to one line okay y is equal to one line so that means equate this with one and find the value so it is going to be uh, 2 plus minus I'm just writing the roots to use using Shridharacharya under root of b square so 4 minus 4 ac uh, so it is going to be 8 yeah 8 divided by 2 so it is going to be 1 plus minus of root 2 so this point is going to be 1 plus root 2 obviously this point is 2 by the way right this point is root 2 plus 1 or 1 plus root 2 or root 2 plus 1 or same thing and this point is going to be root 2 1 minus root 2 okay negative point yeah so now you can see similarly uh, we need these points also to find these points you need to equate this quadratic with with 2 okay so let me do it here x square minus 2x is equal to 2 and then you can write x square minus 2x minus 2 is equal to 0 so you can write plus 2 plus minus under root of b square 4 minus 4 ac so plus 8 divided by 2 so it is going to be 1 plus minus of root 3 so this point is going to be 1 plus 1 minus root 3 and this point is going to be 1 root 3 plus 1 all right like this <coughs> now see let's take the greatest in here <coughs> so if i take the greatest in of this part greatest in of this part it is going to be minus 1 all right i hope it is clear then uh, when x lies between 2 2 root 2 plus 1 graph lies between 0 and 1 so this portion will be 1 then keep plotting these lines sorry this is 0 i'm sorry this is 0 then 1 then 2 okay and the last point will be 3 and left hand side same uh, 0 then 1 and then 2 and then 3 all right this is the graph so i hope you have got it so in this way you just need to figure out these points horizontally because these points might be required like in this question he might ask uh, the points uh, where this function is discontinuous so now you can answer the points of discontinuity are 2 root 2 plus 1 root 3 plus 1 and 3 also similarly 0 uh, 1 minus root 3 1 minus root or uh, 1 minus root 2 and minus one also okay these are the points of discontinuity for this particular function
okay we'll do one more example on this okay because uh, this was an important example so i want you to finish it <clears throat> y is equal to 2 raised to x greatest integer okay when x is uh, x is less than or equal to 2 all right and x is less than minus infinity to you can say x belongs to uh, minus infinity to 2 This is all. This will be our last example, all right?
all right so let's do it then so i hope you have uh, plotted the correct graph let's check this is uh, actually easier than graphs of quadratics which we were plotting so compared to those graphs it is easy Okay, so uh, two raised to x uh, is minus infinity. Uh, at x is uh, when x approaches to minus infinity, it is close to zero, and then it increases. It's an increasing function always, and it reaches to one, right? When x is equal to zero, then uh, then it starts increasing faster. Then it will reach to at x is equal to two, the value will be four, right? So now speed increases so it will go fast like this right like this so you can see at x is equal to 2 at x is equal to 2 this point is going to be 2 or end point so at x is equal to 2 value of y is equal to 2 raised to x is 4 all right 2 raised to x will be 4 and uh, this point is 1 so 0 comma 1 that means it will be 2 and 3 right so let's see uh, when is this value 2 we need to find this point right let's figure it out but 2 you can see easily right 2 so 2 raised to x is equal to 2 that means x is equal to 1 right so this point is nothing but 1 this point is 1 and let's shift this to slightly Let's mark this point. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'll take two somewhere here. So it will go up like this. To reach to four. When x is equal to two. And three. Now this is the point which we need to find. It's not in. It's not an integer. It is some number between. It is some number between one and two. What is that number? So two raised to x is equal to three. How to solve this equation? Take log. So if you take log at base two, log two raised to x base two is equal to log three base two. It is going to be x is equal to log of three base two. All right. This point is log of three base two. Okay, so now we have got all the points. Okay, now now let's plot the greatest India. So this portion, this complete portion between minus infinity to zero, lies below one. So greatest India of all this part, all this part is going to be zero. This part is going to be zero. So this white graph is the graph of greatest integer of two raised to x. Okay, so this portion will become zero. Now this. At x is equal to 0, it becomes 1. So, greatest India will be 1. And between 0 to 1, it is going to be between 0 and 1. Uh, it, it will be 1. Greatest India will be 1. Exact 1. And at 1, it reaches to 2. So, now greatest in integer will also become 2. And when x lies between 1 to log 3 base 2, then greatest India will be exact 2. Alright, exact 2. Similarly, when x lies between log 3 base 2 to 2, then greatest integer is going to be exact 3. But at x is equal to 2, uh, 2 raised to x will become 4. So at this point, greatest integer will be 4. Okay. Yeah. So this is the graph. If I if I remove if I remove the graph of this base graph, then you can see the uh, then you can see this graph clearly. The graph of greatest integer function. Okay, it will look like this.
this is the graph of greatest India function all right this is the graph of greatest India function I hope you have got it <clears throat> okay uh, and then it keep increasing because 2 raised to x is an increasing function so graph of this will also keep increasing all right so uh, you can draw these other graphs as well All right, so uh, this uh, the next graph, uh, the next curve, y is equal to uh, the next is the greatest. Next, we need to put greatest India on x. All right, so when you put greatest India on x, like this, uh, y is equal to replacing x by greatest India of x. Okay, this is next transformation. So this equation y is equal to f x. Now this equation transforms to y is equal to f of greatest India of x. This is actually easier compared to the previous one. Okay, I'll tell you how. Because in this you can decode this. This is going to be uh, say a domain is R for example in this case. Okay, so how would you do? Obviously you need to draw the do, uh, draw this curve in the domain of the function only. So when x belongs to say 0 to 1 say i am assuming that these points are in the domain when x belongs to 0 to 1 this greatest tender of x will become 0 and you need to plot the graph of f of 0 only so you need to plot plot a constant line y is equal to f of 0 so whatever the value of function is at x is equal to 0 the same value will continue up to 1 okay and leave all the values between you are getting between 0 and 1 values of function which you are getting between 0 and 1 do those values will not appear now okay those values will vanish now when x belongs to 1 to 2 when x belongs to 1 to 2 then greatest India of x will be 1 and it is going to be f of 1 only and then when x belongs to 2 to 3 then you need to plot y is equal to f of 2 and f of 2 will continue right and then when x belongs to minus 1 and 0 then greatest linear of x will be minus 1 and you need to plot f of minus 1 and like that. I guess I'll give you one example here. Uh, let, let, let's take that uh, base graph which we were taking. Accordingly you can plot. So say, uh, say this is the graph. But in this graph, I need to mark integral points now. So say this is minus 2 and say this is minus 1. You know, this is 0. So this point is 1. So this point is 2. You need to mark these points on x-axis 3. All right. And then graph will end here between 3 and 4. Right. So you just mark these points. Yeah. This point. Uh, which point you need to mark you need to mark f of minus 2 f of minus 1 f of 0 f of 1 f of 2 and f of 3 mark these points first of all okay this point is f of 2 this point is f of 3 uh, sorry 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 this is f of 1 Uh, this is f of 1 and this is f of 2 all right this is f of 3 slightly uh, okay 
let me lift it to some extent make this graph like okay like this this is f of 3 it doesn't matter what is the value of f of 3 we just need to mark this point f of 3 now what will happen so uh, between whenever x lies between 0 and 1 x lies they see i have written it here when x lies between 0 and 1 we need to plot f of 0 so this is f of 0 right so this f of 0 will continue okay up to 1 now between 1 to 2 what 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 graph you need to plot you need to plot y is equal to f of 1 so y is equal to f of 1 okay always like this between 2 and 3 you need to plot f of 2 so this is f of 2 between 3 and 4 you need to plot f of okay and graph will end here so we are not going up to 4 so this point will not be open okay this will be f of 3 only now between minus 1 and 0 it is going to be f of minus 1 so this is f of minus 1 this will continue okay so you need to plot these horizons and between minus 2 to minus 1 when x belongs to minus 2 to minus 1 f graph will be f of y is equal to f of minus 2 and this will be open so always right side it will be open and get a standard function okay so in this way you need to plot it i will tell you one example of this so suppose we need to plot the graph of y is equal to sine of greatest integer of x all right sine of greatest integer of x let's plot it see how we plot it I will plot this graph between 0 to 2 pi only, okay, between 0 to 2 pi. Although this function is not periodic, okay, because then when you put you know, greatest integer on x, then it won't be periodic. So this is your sin x. I'm just taking up, making it big, so that clearly visible. right now in this graph what you need to mention is one these integers okay one and uh, you know two is slightly more than okay uh, this is one this is two uh, oh, oh, again uh, okay I'll fix it again. This two is slightly. Uh, let's take one here. Okay, now it's fine. This is two. This is three. Okay. This is four. And uh, five. Five is. Uh, uh, pi is three point one four. Yeah, slightly ahead. This is five ahead of three pi by two. And this is six, okay. Like so, if I mark these point f of one, f of two, f of three, this is f of zero because you need to find uh, this will be f a sine of sine of zero when x belongs to zero to one, okay. Sine of one when x belongs to one to two, like that. Sine of two when x belongs to two to three, all right and so on sine of 3 sine of 4 sine of 5 so sine of 1 is this okay sine of 2 sine of 1 is close to sine uh, 60 right uh, less than slightly less than so root 3 by 2 and sine of 2 is uh, greater than sine of 1 okay it's 2 means uh, like close to 120 but more than more than that uh, one minute less than that sorry less than 120 so slightly above like this Let's take this point as f of 2, okay? Yes. And f of 3 will be here, close to pi. And then f of 4 is here, and f of 5 is here, and f of 6 is here, okay? I'm, I'm slightly making it random. Uh, I'm not comparing these values, which one is up or which one is below. But yes, you can compare. But most probably they are right. So this will continue up to 1 then sine 1 will continue up to 2 okay this length is 1 1 unit only okay this 
looking bigger but yeah it is one then this this will be sine of 2 this is sine of 2 this is sine of 1 this is sine of 0 which is 0 and then sine of 3 will continue okay sine of 3 then this sine 4 will continue okay sine 4 which is negative sine 5 will continue sine 5 then sine 6 all right sine 6 and you can end here up to pi okay so last point will not, will not be open because it will be open at 7 it will be open at 7 so up to 7 it will continue okay up to 7 it will continue like this so i hope it, this example is clear will will uh, next session will start with some more examples of this type and we will learn great, putting greatest integer of transformation when we put greatest integer on y all right and then we'll do mixed examples uh, putting greatest integer on x as well as on y simultaneously or, or on fx all right so we'll do more complex examples in our next session okay so today i'll end it here and thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed then like it and also subscribe the channel and hit the like button all right thank you very much